Today we're going to create a stunning LED audio visualizer using Arduino, WS2812B LEDs, and the MSGEQ7 breakout board. In this video I'll be using Arduino Uno, a WS2812B 8x32 LED matrix, the MSGEQ7 breakout board, a power adapter, a 5 volt 15 amp DC converter, the Oons Angle 3 Pro speakers, a 3.5 millimeter audio splitter for the two 3.5 millimeter audio cables that I have, and then some jumper wires. Just a heads up, if you're using the power connector, the max current is 5 amps. I don't go anywhere near that, so it's not really an issue with me. But if you find that you are and it's getting hot or heating up or you want a long time permanent solution, these terminal blocks are an excellent option and they are rated for up to 15 amps. This is the MSG EQ7 breakout board. Now the MSG EQ7 is a 7 band graphic equalizer IC. And here we have it integrated on a breakout board for us to simplify things. It uh, basically it separates an audio signal into seven frequency bands and amplitude of each band is measured and output is a DC signal making it a great option for audio visualization which is what we're going to do here today. So the main component in our project today is the msgeq 7 ic or integrated circuit and what this chip does it does three things audio frequency separation peak detection and multiplexed output. So it divides incoming audio signals into seven distinct frequency bands and it detects the amplitude of each frequency band and provides it as a DC output and then outputs the amplitudes one by one which can be cycled through using the reset and strobe pins. Before I forget I want to mention that this breakout board comes in a mono and stereo version. I have the stereo version and if you look closely you can see that it has two of the msgeq 7 ICs. The mono version just has one. And the reason for that, as you know, is that audio is processed differently from mono and stereo. For the mono, it combines left and right audio channels into a single signal before feeding it into the IC. And this represents the overall audio spectrum heard by both ears rather than separating left and right channels. And the stereo version processes left and right channels separately and this allows each channel to be analyzed by its own IC. And this provides individual frequency band data for both channels and that allows true stereo analysis. Now there are six pins. There's a VDD pin, which is positive power supply. That's 2.7 volt to 5.5 volt. Typically you're gonna see five volt for this pin. Then we have a reset pin. The reset pin resets the multiplexer to the first band. Then we have a strobe pin. Since the MSGEQ7 internally multiplexes or cycles through seven frequency bands, it's the strobe pin that's the control input that advances the multiplexer to the next frequency band. Then we have the output L and the output R. These are your multiplex DC outputs for the frequency bands. And then we have a ground pin. Here's a wiring diagram if you need it. Also included some close-ups. It's a good idea to place the capacitor as close as possible to the connection point where the 5 volt power lines enter the LED matrix. This would help smooth out voltage stability and protect your LEDs. In the code we include the fast LED library and then the constants and hardware configuration. We define the total number of LEDs in the matrix and the pin connected to the LED matrix. Here we describe the layout of the LED matrix, which is important for mapping audio data to specific LEDs. Output L and R pins are on analog 0 and analog 1 of the Arduino. The strobe and reset pin are on Arduino pin 2 and 3. These are the LED data structures. Uh, they're the arrays that store the RGB value for each LED. Down here we have the coordinate mapping. This uh, maps the XY coordinates on the matrix to a linear LED array index. The fast LED initialization is included in the setup. This configures the LEDs for my matrix with a GRB color order and sets the brightness to 50%. We configure the control pin strobe and reset as outputs and then set their initial states. In the loop, this resets the MSGEQ7 to prepare for cycling through frequency bands. And then this section reads the frequency band data. It's the strobe pin that advances the MSGQ7's multiplexer to the next frequency band on each iteration. This stores amplitudes for each frequency band and then reads are sequential for all seven bands. Here we're smoothing audio values. This reduces sudden changes in LED brightness, creating smoother transitions. And this makes sure all the LEDs are turned off before updating for the new frame. This section is for visualizing the left channel. Each column corresponds to one of the seven frequency bands and the height is proportional to the band's amplitude and this is for our reddish yellowish color gradient. This section maps to the right audio channel. It's the same logic as the left channel but with a blue to purple color gradient. 
And this sends the updated LED data to the matrix and a slight pause for smoother animation. And now we'll upload our code to the Arduino board. If you're using the IC and not the breakout board, you want to check the data sheet because there are some capacitors and resistors you're going to need to add. If you're using the breakout board, all those resistors and capacitors are included on board so you don't have to worry about that as this diagram shows you. Well, that's all I have today and I hope you found it useful. If you did, be sure to like the video by giving it a thumbs up. Also share with somebody else who may find it useful and consider subscribing if you enjoy this type of stuff. And I'll see you again with another video.